In sections 1.3 and 1.4, we learned about good methods of taking samples, stratified sample, cluster sample, simple random sample, systematic sample. But we mentioned one that was not good, but it's frequently used, called a convenient sample. And we said that convenient samples are biased. Ah, so bias means that when you take that sample, it's going to lead to untrue results, right? Actually, any method is biased if it has a tendency to produce an untrue value if it's skewed in some way towards one group or another, for example. Now, there are three main types of bias in which convenience sample is actually only one type of this type, right? this larger type. It's a, it's a sub-subset. So what are the three forms of bias? Well, there's sampling bias. Sampling bias means you took a bad sample. Your sample is not representative of your population. Then there's non-response bias. Non-response bias is, hey, my sample was fine, but people aren't responding to me, <laughs> right? People aren't answering my questions or they hang up on me or whatever. That's non-response bias. And then there's response bias, which is they might be answering you, but they might be answering you untruthfully, or you might have posed bad questions or whatever, right? We'll talk about all of them. All right, so those are the three main sources. Right? Sorry, that's so dark. All right, so let's go back to sampling bias. Sampling bias, convenient sample is the most common of those. It's when you're just taking a sample from easily obtained people or people that self-select. So anything that's an internet poll, that's one of these types. Anything where people call in, um, if they self-select, select themselves to be part of the group, then that's a convenient sample. The other main for, excuse me, the other main way to have a sampling bias is that you have an incomplete frame. Now remember the frame is the list of all the people. So suppose your frame just doesn't have everybody in it, right? If the list of people from which to take the sample is not complete for some reason, that results in something called under coverage. This is actually a problem with the US Census, right? So the US Census has a problem with under coverage because what happens is not everybody gets it and those that do have to be able to read and write in order to be able to fill it out. And so it tends to undercover, underrepresent people that are poor, people that are illiterate, that kind of thing. Right? So that's an incomplete frame problem. You're taking a sample in a poor way. So both of these are your sample is messed up, maybe inadvertently, but nevertheless messed up. And it's making everything that you do from that sample wrong. All right. Now, non-response bias is a different problem. Non-response bias is, hey, your frame was fine. You had the list of everybody, all good, but people are not responding. People hang up on you when you get on the phone with them, that kind of thing. Now, there are ways that we try to deal with this, but there's only so much we can do. This is actually becoming a bigger and bigger problem with the rise of cell phones because people won't respond to calls. They, they screen their calls, right? They won't look. So there's always some of this, but we want it to be minimal. We want it to be small, right? Now, one of the ways we do that is we give incentives. We call back a lot of times. <laughs> we give rewards. And everybody who's been to a restaurant knows this, right? So think of, uh, or even a store, so the phone number at the bottom of a receipt, call this phone number and give us your opinion and we'll give you a $50 gift card or we'll enter you for, um, let me think, $100 at so-and-so, right? So you're entered to win a prize. That's an incentive, right? That what they're doing is an incentive, right? And the reason they're doing that is because they know if they just call customers of, you know, Outback Steakhouse, I don't know why I picked Outback, but if they call the customers of Outback Steakhouse, people won't answer. But if the customers want to call in, then that might help. And why would self-selection be okay in that case? Well, you're looking for customers of this, the restaurant. It's still a bit of a problem that it's a convenience sample, but that would actually be less of a problem for a restaurant than would non-response bias, right? You want people to call in. It's less of a problem that they're calling in on their own convenience and that they're self-selecting themselves to be joining it, right? So that's an example where non-response is a bigger problem, say for like Outback Steakhouse. And then there's all the response biases and boy, are there a lot of them. So there's interviewer error. Um, that comes down in a variety of factors. The interview could be untrustworthy, right? It's somebody you can't trust to tell the truth to, or they're not skilled at obtaining the right answers. Maybe they don't follow the script like they're supposed to, right? That 
would be the other way to do that. And then sometimes people lie, right? They just straight up won't tell you the truth. I've had this um, happen to me when I was in college. They were like, what, what does your parents make? What's your household income? I have no idea. What my, you know, this is not something I ask my parents. <laughs> Generally, it's like, what's our household income, mom and dad? So I lied. <laughs> like, I didn't know what it was. I had no clue what it was. So I just made it up, <laughs> right? That's misrepresenting answers. I'm misrepresenting facts. Um, I'm sort of lying because I, you know, I just don't know what it is. Um, the wording of questions. So sometimes the way the question is worded can lead to a biased answer, right? These are not the same thing as a biased sample. This is the, the questions are messed up. So the sample is the sample's messed up. Non-response bias is people won't talk to you. And response bias is you're getting them to talk to you, but you've worded questions wrong, or they don't trust you, or they don't know what you're asking, so they're just going to lie about it, or they do know what you're asking and are going to lie about it. Um, the way you've ordered the questions is confusing or hard for people, and it causes a bias in the response. The type of question that you're asking so who's the best, Federer or Nadal? That's a tennis question for anybody who doesn't know. But suppose you think it's Djokovic. You've closed it off to just Federer and Nadal, and you're not leaving it open to other questions or to other answers people might want to say, right? And then data entry error. That's you got all your questions, everybody answered you, but somebody's putting them in wrong by accident into the computer. That actually happens more than one would think. It, it it's you know, it's a problem because you're entering things into computers, but you try to check for that data entry error. Now, one quick note, sampling bias and sampling error are not the same thing. And that's a very important thing to note. Sampling bias is you messed up, right? I'll go to this one first, because there is a flaw in the way that you are collecting data that consistently makes you off target. Bias is a severe mistake, right? And it means that you lose the ability to draw any conclusions whatsoever, regardless of how big your sample size is. Notice, you can have a really large sample, right? But it doesn't make any difference. Oh, I can't stress this enough. Because your sample is terrible, right? So size does not compensate for a bad sample. Quality of sample always matters more than quantity. Quality of sample is more important than the size. So if you have 20,000 people calling into American Idol, it's still a terrible, terrible survey. right? Your sample size N is not nearly as important as how you took the survey, how you did this. That's sampling bias. If you messed up your sample bias, if you take a convenient sample, no amount of sample size is going to save you. It's still a terrible, terrible sample. There is a flaw, right? Sampling bias means you have a bad sample. Sampling error is not an error. <laughs> sampling error is fine. Sampling error is something you cannot avoid. As a matter of fact, sampling error will always happen. Now, sampling error, what is it? Remember, it's how every little sample is different. So different results will come from different samples. And no sample perfectly represents the population. Because you have your population. Um, let me give you right here. So here's your population. And then you draw from it a little sample right sample right there no matter what the samples are all different from each other there's another sample all the samples are different and none of them is a perfect representation of the population so they'll all give you slightly different results but it should be only slight right so the samples are all slightly different from each other Sampling error is not an error. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just acknowledging that there's, there's slosh here from sample to sample and from the sample to the population. No sample perfectly represents that population, right? And no sample is exactly like another sample. They're all just a little bit different. 
and that's okay, right? Sampling error is okay, right? It just means that samples are different and samples are different from the population. They're different from each other and different from the population. And I just wrote that down. And the distinction between those two is very important because the bottom one means everything is garbage. And the top one is exactly what we expect to see happening. And we just have to deal with the fact that everything is a little bit different. And we will do so in chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11. All right, now with that, it always helps if we have an example to kind of attach our definitions to. So we are going to take all those different kinds of errors. So the two sampling kind, which were right here, convenience and incomplete frame, the non-response, which is kind of its own bias unto itself, and then all the different response errors. Right there they are in all their glory. And we're going to figure out which one of these goes with which. All right. So a person making the phone calls reads the script incorrectly. Okay, that is interviewer error. That is number four. The interviewer is not doing what they should be doing. Okay, remember there's two types of interviewer error. You don't trust the interviewer and the interviewer just screws up. And that's exactly what's happening here, that second thing. The person typing in the answers accidentally types that a student wants professors to have a 25% pay raise. Oh, that'd be nice. Instead of a 2.5% pay raise. Ah, both of those would be nice. That's data entry error. That's a classic, you know, the person typing it in just messes up, loses a decimal point accidentally. I do that when I write exams. You know, it's, it's easy to do. All right, Jackson College gets the names and phone numbers for only students in the fall semester. Oh, they messed up. So they managed to only get the fall semester, which means they have an incomplete frame, right? Oh, I apologize. I should have set this up. We, we want to poll students about salary negotiations for professors for no particular reason, right? So if you only get fall semester rather than all semesters, that's an incomplete frame. You're not getting the full picture of all students, right? So this is not all the students. Um, the possible pay raise levels always start with the highest number, so students reply with that one in the list. Oh, that's sneaky. So you always say, you know, hey, do you think they should get 5%, 4%, or 3%? So if you always keep it in that order, then people are all, tend to respond to the thing they hear first. So that's actually the order of the questions, right? The order of the words. Um, there was actually an issue with this in the governor's election in California, when Arnold Schwarzenegger was electing, um, being elected, they purposely were rotating the names. They always do that in the state elections in California to try to make it so that this doesn't happen because people tend to pick whichever names on the top of the list, believe it or not. All right. Students are called, but hundreds of them do not answer. Okay. That's non-response. That's number three. Should probably be the only number three one out there, but I don't know. All right. If they're not responding to you, that's a non-response error. Maybe I've got another one in there. A professor gives students surveys about their feeling in class, but only asks multiple choice questions and doesn't ask for further comments. Actually, I hate it when um, people do this even for the end of the semester, you know, how did I do survey? I always like the comments. Those are the best part. So that would be the type of questions. They're only asking multiple choice. They're not getting any of the free response. So that would be number eight. All right, students say whatever they think the interviewer wants to hear, but they don't really believe it. Um, that's because the students are lying to you. <laughs> so that would be number five. They're misrepresenting their answers. There could be reasons for why that is, but nevertheless, they are lying. The question put to the students asks, you think professors are overpaid, right? Ah, so that's the wording. So they're, they're biasing the question and how they're asking it. So that's the wording of the question, which is number six. Now, you might be getting a little confused about six versus seven. Six is that you're, you're phrasing it in such a way that it's leading. So if you think of like a leading question, that's that one, right? So if I go back here, when you hear about leading questions, that's the wording, right, of the question. So you think professors are overpaid, right? Order of questions is basically you're biasing your results by always asking this one first or by always putting this name first or that kind of thing. 
All right, the dean of students walks over to CV1, one of the dorms on campus, and asks every student they can find. <laughs> that is convenient sample. That is a biased sample. They're not getting a fair representation of students. Even if students respond, it's not a good representation. All right, an uh, email is sent out to JC students, and not surprisingly, only 3% respond. That is actually another non-response bias. You're not getting most students to respond to you. So that's a non-response issue. The president of the college conducts one-on-one -on -one interviews with students in his office. All right, so let's think about that. They pull you into his office. They offer you water. It's very intimidating with its leather furniture and so on and so forth. And he says, well, tell me if you think professors should get a raise, right? You're, you're intimidated. So that's number four. That's going to be an intimidation. The interviewer is not trustworthy which is not to say anything about the president of the college. It has to do with um, the person being intimidated. So if the interviewer is intimidating or if the situation is intimidating, then it's not trustworthy. It doesn't breed trust. And so that would be an interviewer error. Not really that the interviewer did anything wrong necessarily, but it's just the situation and the circumstances that the interviewer is in. And by nature of their office and who they are, it will be intimidating and the person will not be able to really speak freely. And then a survey sent out by administration asks you to list any issues with you have. Oh, see, this is, this is order. So tell me all the problems you have with professors. Now do you think professors should get raises? See, by putting the listing all the issues you have, like tell us every issue you've ever had with an instructor. You're, they're getting you to think of negative things first. And so then when they ask you about raises, you won't say yes. You'll be like, no, I don't think they deserve a raise because all you've thought about is the bad stuff and not the good stuff. So that is order of the questions. That's seven.